Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Cooling Lady and it is time for hashtag FFC Challenge 2023. In July, we're going to create a bridge card. For my project, I'm going to use my new collection called Color Year World. It has 20 beautiful design papers and patterns and also 30 sentiments as well. If you like it, if you get the full collection, it also has some SVG files and PDF templates. If you haven't heard about hashtag FFC Challenge 2023, it is hosted by Monica Papermona. Every single fifth of the month, we're going to create a different fancy fold. In July, it is a bridge card, and it's an open challenge, which means every single person can take part in it. All you have to do is to use that hashtag FFC Challenge 2023. For my bridge card, I'm going to use 6 by 10 inches white card, and I'm going to score it at 1.5 inches. Then I've got 3 inches. I'm going to turn my card 180 degrees and again one and a half and 3 inches. As you can see here, I made a mistake but it is super easy to fix it. All you have to do is to turn your card over and literally burnish that score line. And it is gone. Super quick, right? Now it is time to use our scoring tool and burnish all those score lines. And this way we are going to have the base for the card. Card. And what's really good about the bridge card, it actually folds flat in the envelope. And this card in the end is going to be 6 by 7 inches. So now it will be the time to decorate the panels. And I decided to use my collection because I love playing with colors. So for my biggest panels, I'm going to use green color. And I'm going to create four panels measuring one and a quarter by five and three quarters. And then for my smaller panels, I'm going to create two with blue and two with purple, and they will measure one inch by five and a half. Literally, that is all you have to do at the moment. Super quick and simple. So if you want to create that bridge card, it is so much fun. And there are just so many possibilities. As you know here, I'm going to use some colors, so later on it is going to be, let's say, all about our theme, because I really like it. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a go, right? So as you can see, those panels come together super quickly. I do encourage you to use a, a liquid glue, because that what really makes a difference. You do have time to maneuver the elements. So now it will be time to assemble our panels on our card base. And as you can see, it will fold flat later. But to make that bridge effect, I decided to have a twist. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to use later on. As I told you, it is going to be art themed. So you can have a guess now what I'm going to do. So when these panels are ready, it will be time for that middle element. And I decided to go with rainbow colors. So here I printed two design papers on one A4 sheet. And I'm going to have three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And now it is time to use that liquid glue and adhere that panel here. Super quick and simple. When this is ready, then you have to decide how you want to decorate your card. As you can see, it will fold flat. And at this point, I thought, let's play with some SVG files. And I use one of it. And this one is an easel. I thought that would be a really nice focal point for this card. And I'm going to use my try blend markers from Spectre Noir, and I always keep them in that box. If you'd like to know how to create that storage box, check the link at the top right corner. So now I'm going to add the color, because as you can see, I only use white card to cut it using my scan and cut machine. If you don't have it, you can also get my PDF files, and you can print it and fussy cut it as well. So that is not a problem. But here, I decided to cut it with white card because that's what I usually do. Because I've got so many alcohol markers in my stash, so I thought that would be the way to go. When the easel is ready, I'm just going to leave it here. And then I'm going to use one of the other colors and I'm going to create, let's say, a frame for a painting. 
and I really wanted to go darker here because I want my sentiments to stand out a lot. But as you can see, you don't really have to color the whole rectangle. All you have to do is literally to color the edges super quick and simple. So now let's have a look at the elements I cut using my scan and cut machine. So I use some art palettes and that will create that bridge element. But first I'm going to add a little bit of interest using Distress Oxiding in tea dye color. If you're interested in any of the products I use in today's video, you can check the description down below. And again, if you haven't heard about hashtag FFC Challenge 2023, it is an amazing challenge and we also have a Facebook group where you can share your beautiful makes there. If you want to create a bridge card this month, I do encourage you to use that hashtag on any social media so we can actually see it. And to be honest, it is so amazing to see other crafters creating those fancy folds every single month. So if you haven't taken part yet, maybe today is the day. So now I'm going to create that bridge effect. So I'm going to use my pencil and create some marks first. So it has to be over than four inches wide. And I'm going to draw, let's say, a curve. And I'm going to have it like here, as you can see. So they go over my marks. And I'm going to use my scissors to fussy cut it. To be honest, it doesn't have to be perfect because all I have to do is to actually connect the sides of my card. And when I'm happy with it, I'm going to use my liquid glue. And what's really good about this, you do have time to maneuver it, but you really have to be patient because the glue has to set before you move on to the next step. So here I waited about 40 seconds, to be honest. Now I'm going to place some art palettes here as you can see, they layer really nicely to create that dimensional effect. And that's what I really wanted to achieve here. If you want, you can also make those palettes bigger and that will be perfectly fine. So you can bridge, your bridge can be even bigger. That is fine. So when these elements are ready, I thought that bridge is not strong enough. So what can I do to make it even better? So from my collection, I've got those paintbrushes, SVG files, and whenever I use my scan and cut machine, I always put the first letter of the color, like P for purple, B for blue, and so on. Because if you get my SVG files, I color coded them, so then it is so much easier to actually assemble the paintbrushes together. So here, I decided to go with that blue color actually green, because we do have those green panels on all the sides. So I thought if I make those paintbrushes green, they will match the card beautifully. And I really want to achieve that 3D look here. So I'm starting with the darkest color on all the edges, then my mid color and light color. And whenever you create any elements like this using white cards, I do encourage you to use your pen on the edges as well, because then no one will know that you actually use white card. Now I'm going to color in those other paintbrushes using darker green, because I really like to have those ombre effects in my card making. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a go, right? And when these are ready, it will be time to color in all the other parts. But don't forget to use your pens on the edges as well. So when these are ready, I'm going to color in the tips of the paintbrushes. And to do it, I decided to use very light brown. I think that would be the way to go. But if you get this collection and the paintbrushes, you can use any color. So then they will look like you actually use some paint on them. And I think that would be pretty cool as well. And what's really good about any SVG files, you can make them as big or as small as you want. And I think that is the best thing in the world. Because here, I really wanted some bigger paintbrushes because I wanted to connect the left and the right sides of my card. Now, as you can see, I'm using those very nice browns here to color in the tips, super quick and simple. If you want, you can also make some lines to indicate the brushes. And that'll be perfectly fine. 
So when these are ready, all we have to do is to color in those metal pieces. And to do it, I do encourage you to use some gray color. So throughout this video, you probably saw some links to the videos with this collection. So if you haven't seen them yet, I do encourage you to have a look because I created a couple of amazing projects. And actually, on Monica's Paper Mona YouTube channel, you can find some inspiration as well. In the description down below, I left the links to Monica's video with a bridge cut and also Christine as well. So please check those out. And at the end of this video, yes, you can see those projects as well. So you can check them out. So when these are ready, I did it off camera. It is time to assemble the paintbrushes and it is super simple. Let's start with those tips. And as you can see, I left like a small rectangle at the bottom. So then it is so much easier to assemble it with that metal element. So when these are ready, I do encourage you to leave those paintbrushes to set for about one or two minutes before you move on to the next step. I wonder, have you ever created a bridge card? If you have, what theme or color combo did you use? Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't created it for a very long time, maybe July is the month for you. So if you do create a bridge card, please share it with us on your social media using that hashtag FFC Challenge 2023. So when these paintbrushes are ready, it will be time to put our sentiment because as you can see, I left the easel for now because I wasn't very sure where to put it before I put those paintbrushes. So when this is ready, as you can see, it falls flat and yes, it will go in seven by seven inches envelope. Now let's create a sentiment. And as I told you in my collection, you get 30 sentiments which you can use for variety of occasions. So here I was checking the size, which one will actually fit on my easel and the painting. So decisions, decisions. So I decided to go with have a colorful day. I really like it. So I use my guillotine from Crafters Companion and I cut it to the size I needed. And when this is ready, I thought let's add a little bit more color and variation by using Distress Oxide Ink in tea dye color. So this way, all my art palettes and that element here will match, right? So when this is ready, we can put some double-sided foam adhesive for extra dimension because I thought that's what that sentiment really needs. If you agree with me, please let me know in the comments down below. Also wonder, have you ever created a card with an art theme? If you have, what did you do? Did you create a shaped card or something else? Please let me know in the comments down below. So now it is time for that double-sided home adhesive and you can always cut it to the size you want. So when this is ready, I'm going to peel it off with my pokey tool and then add a few drops of liquid glue. And this way, this card will be professionally finished and it will last for many, many years. So when this is ready, let's put it on a card. So as you can see, now I know exactly where to put it because the paintbrushes are set and the art palettes as well. But when you look at those art palettes, something is definitely missing. So I was looking at them and I decided to use one of my favorite things, which is gems I couldn't resist. So I did it in rainbow color here. I'm not really sure if it's visible on the video, but in real life, it really makes a difference. So the card folds flat and there is plenty of space to write your message on the back. So if you haven't tried bridge card, maybe this month is for you. So don't forget to share your make using that hashtag FFC challenge 2023. And July, it is the bridge card. Thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And here you can see amazing projects created by Monica and Christine. Have a wonderful day and see you in my next video tomorrow. Bye!